Hello, my name is Thomas Lowe, and this is a presentation on the industrial change in Britain from 1700 to 1850. This presentation will focus on industrial change in Britain and from the year 1700 to 1850, as just said. It will inform you the meaning of industrial change, it will tell you the kinds of inventions which drove the Industrial Revolution, how the government aided industrial change. It will also outline the differences in the economy between the 1700s compared to the 1800s. It will also discuss what is meant by an urban society and how it differs from a rural one and how urbanisation created and drove apart certain of its social classes. Bang, bang. So here we can see population growth from 1540 to 1900 in Great Britain. So this graph shows the rapid increase of population of Great Britain, most notably the swift incline during the late 1700s and through the 1800s. And at the beginning of the 1700s, Britain's population was sat at around 5 million people. Until the 1720s, England's population growth had been held back due to periodic harvest failures and by diseases such as influenza and smallpox. By the beginning of the 1800s, the population had increased by 2 million, and then by the end of the 1800s, we see the population has driven to just above 30 million people. Yeah. As Britain started becoming more of an urban society, more people living in towns and cities rather than villages, the population grew. There were also many immigrants coming into Britain, most notably from Ireland, during the potato famine in the 1840s, and also from Russia during the 1880s, where the Tsar began persecuting Jewish people. A number of them fled and settled in the eastern end of London. The number and efficiency of transport networks also grew significantly over this period. This allowed more people to move to cities and towns where industrialization was taking hold. Most roads in the early 18th century were in a poor state, however, and major roads were prone to flooding during the winter. As a result of this, local authorities applied for things called turnpike acts. These are essentially toll roads, so new roads could be constructed and tolls be set up to use them. The introduction of toll roads meant that there was an increasing amount of money used to sustain new roads, waterways and railways. For example, in the 1780s, a stagecoach journey from London to Edinburgh could take up to two weeks. This was reduced significantly by the improvement of major roads and the journey time was cut to just two days. Shaking. Um, another reason behind many people able to, being able to move to towns and cities during this period is because of the advancements in the agricultural industry. The huge increase in the production of food meant the population away from agriculture to like urban towns and cities was it was able to sustain itself without being near an agricultural site. The efficiency of these transport networks meant that food needed in urban towns was readily available. Right, on to the next one. So this is uh, discussing Britain's economy in 1700 to 1760. In the mid-1700s, the Industrial Revolution was still a way off. Agricultural output, however, was, and I quote, at least twice that of any other European country and was able to continue so until the 1850s. Also, a new interest in variety and consumerism had developed. The idea that it was okay to find happiness in buying things began to take hold things such as fashionable clothing, so that material wealth you know, started becoming a bit more prevalent as the country grew richer. Uh, Britain produced an exponential amount of wool and cloth. It also began trading with India for new and exciting fabrics the country had never seen before. This rise in demand for the cloth and fabrics saw the cottage, injury, cottage industries absolutely boom. Britain started to benefit from exporting more grain than it was importing. The agricultural industry started to benefit de development in general. Wages started to rise and people's lives were improving materially. They were getting more in return for their labour. This meant that people can start purchasing manufactured items, which also drove industrialisation even more, as there was more demand for these sorts of products. <coughs> British farmers began increasing the yield of fodder crops used to feed the livestock. This surplus meant that they were able to maintain large stocks of farm animals during the winter instead of slaughtering them. The use of irrigation during this period also allowed productivity to rise. We now move on to coal and pig iron production in the 1700s to 1854. <coughs> Excuse me. As we can see from the table, the output of coal increased from 2.9 million tonnes in the 1700s to just over 68 million tonnes by the 1850s. The same pattern of growth can also be found when analysing the output of pig iron on the right hand side of the table. The reason behind this rapid influx was due to the invention of important technologies. So, what inventions and innovations in the industry were there during the 18th century? Well, as we can see, Thomas Newcomen steam driven piston engine in 1712. He invented the steam-driven piston engine in 1712, like I just said, I don't want to repeat that. This was used as a more efficient method for pumping in deep mines. As the century advanced, steam engines improved rapidly. By 1800, there were around 2,000 steam engines at work in Britain. The use of steam engines in coal mining was important and allowed for a surplus to be created and offered cheaply to the iron industry. I can't remember who that is. Um, oh, who is it? Oh, that's Abraham Darby, I think. Um, by the 1700s, the nation's timber, timber supply is severely decimated. This meant that charcoal production also slowed right down. Darby's, Abraham Darby's successful experiment in using coal as a substitute for charcoal in the production of iron meant that the number of tonnes of iron that had been produced increased rapidly. He founded the Bristol Iron 
founded the company in 1708 and in 1709 used coal instead of charcoal to smelt iron for the first time. This brings me on to another incredibly important invention. <coughs> Sorry, I need some water. Why don't we just pause for a minute? Yeah, my mouth's just getting really dry. Just go 